So let's say the Niners don't make the playoffs as you all predicted. And let's say Jed York says that's enough. This is a good team. You mismanaged it. I can get a new guy in here and make the playoffs next year, just like we did in 2011. If the Niners were to do that, who would be the replacement? Now, I know there's two months left. Probably best to see how the season plays out before you fire anyone and hire anyone. But right now, who's on your radar? So for me, I don't have a person in mind, but I have an idea of how I want the organization ran from here on out. I think your mind automatically goes to you have to bring in an offensive head coach because you've got Trey Lance. And I disagree a little bit with that theory. Uh, my thought process goes, you obviously want a strong GM. That should be the hierarchy, GM then coach. But that being said, I want a coach who's more of a, a CEO type. I want a coach that they run it the way that they do in Seattle or they run it the way that they do in Baltimore and some of these other, you know, Buffalo is another team that I think of where the head coach is really a head coach. He's making sure that all the pieces are running the way that they need to be ran, but you have a true offensive coordinator and you have a true defensive coordinator. So for me, I want that head coach to be that buffer, that guy that is, is, making sure that the players mindsets are in the right place, that practices are ran the way they need, they need to be ran, that the clock is managed, that when you throw out a challenge flag, it's not because you heard fumble, whatever. I want a CEO as a head coach. And then from there, there's a clear hierarchy. That's what I would look for. Yeah, I have, I have two names. Um, the first one's not going to happen, but it would be Jim Harbaugh. He's the perfect fit for this team. Of course. And uh, the second one probably isn't likely to happen either, but it'd be Josh McDaniels. I think McDaniels McDaniels with Trey Lance would be a good combination. He seems to like that type of quarterback style of quarterback. I yep. think it would work. Uh, he can make Cam, that, yep. I think he can make that work. I like that one, I like that a lot. That's good. I like that. Um, who, whoever it's, whoever it is, I think it's, it, it's got to be what, what Jesse, what Jesse said. And I think the first question should be is, what do you feel about Trey Lance and what's your plan for Trey Lance? Because that's all who's going to decide the future of the franchise. Um, and then who's, who's on your staff. If you are, if you are a defensive guy, then who's, who's going to be your quarterback coach? Who's going to be your offensive coordinator? Who's going to be your defense coordinator? Who are you bringing in? I think maybe one of the, one of the things that, that allowed McVay to be McVay is he was able to bring in Wade Phillips and, and Wade Phillips, you know, he controlled that side of the ball. And I'm sure he helped mentor uh, Sean McVay in his first year with some of the aspects of being a head coach. Um, I saw someone write Joe Brady. I know, and I know it's Sam Darnold had, has tapered off, but you never know. And, and, you know, Brady has done some nice things with, with some quarterbacks. You never know how, in an interview how he might come across. And if, and, and if he comes as across as that CEO type, whether it, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be Brady, it could be the enemy. It could be, it could be any of those guys, but they have to have a plan and they have to be able to bring in other guys, not just themselves. It's, it's one of the most underrated aspects of, of, of coaching is who's on your staff because one guy can't coach the entire team. Um, and it happens on, on our level, on the high school level. And, and it's in college, in college, like you could have a great head coach, but if he doesn't have a great staff, it really is not going to count to much. Um, I agree. And, and, and so, you need a great staff and you really do need a, a great um, personnel department too. Uh, so they need to handle that hire first and then hire the, and then hire the coach. I'm with you. Uh, I agree with everything you said. Last thing I, I want to add. Um, how about someone who's got some head coaching experience? Now I know there are examples of guys who had none that went on to become head coaches in their first start stint, like Andy Reid and Sean McVay. But um it, as you mentioned with Sean McVay, he had Wade Phillips at first. He put experience, he brought experience with him. I think what we've seen here is Kyle, um, an inexperienced guy who put too much on his plate. Um, I mean, Bill Walsh was a head coach at Stanford first. I think, you know, Cliff Kingsbury was a head coach at Texas Tech first. Uh, something to be said for having some experience and, and not being your first time as a head coach. Because if Kyle Shanahan becomes a head coach somewhere else, he'd probably be better off the second time, uh, you know. So anyway, Grant, I know I know this is a name that people aren't going to like, 
But did he really do that bad of a job as Doug Peterson? Like, did he really – was he really that – he won a Super Bowl yeah. against Tom Brady true. with a backup quarterback, yeah. made the playoffs, made the playoffs three times. He's kind of like that Mike McCarthy figure, right? Like, his stock was down, but once he steps away for a, a minute uh, and you look at him, like, well, actually, his resume is <laughs> – a lot better than anyone else we're going to find, right? I think it's better. To me, I think it's better than McCarthy. He, I think he accomplished a little more with less. But You're saying that Aaron Rodgers is better than Nick Foles? Okay, I'll allow it. <laughs>